Is anyone else's for you page just filled with discourse over what the male gaze is versus the female gaze? Let's talk about the female gaze. It's actually really interesting because this is like a prime example of the male gaze. So chances are if you have a TikTok account and you are alive, you were not in a coma or something like that, then you've seen these videos about the male and female gaze. And they've kind of morphed into this trend where people will say something like, do I look like I was written by a male or a female? Or they'll do a side by side if I was written by a male versus if I was written by a female where they dress different, they have makeup on. Maybe they have a little bit different body mannerisms to look a little bit different, right? What is this? It's kind of taking over by storm and a lot of people are talking about it, but what is the male and female gaze and how is it affecting us? The female gaze is hard to define, but it can be best described as a term used to describe art that subverts the ubiquitous male perspective. So basically, it's content that appeals to satisfy women's fantasies. So we see the female gaze in likes of Magic Mike, the movie where there's all these hunks that are strikingly handsome with ripped chisel bods and bulging biceps. And we see it in a lot of other movies and TV shows. And it kind of disembodies men. It takes their personality away and, and it looks at them just on a visual level. And this has been going on for years, probably the past hundred years of film. We see this, there's the hunk and he's so sexy and attractive. And it kind of puts this pressure on men to always feeling like they have to be masculine and the alpha male, the leader, this masculine, handsome leader type man. But we're not alone in this. Women also suffer because of the male and female gaze. Think of the movie Transformers. In the first scene where Shia LaBeouf is watching Megan Fox work on his car or whatever, and it's just panning up her body, body part by body part, kind of disembodying her, taking away any sort of personality. All you see is her body, right? And don't get me wrong, she was looking sexy as hell in that movie, but it's scenes and movies like these that put a lot of pressure on women as well to always look seductive and attractive and feminine. And the truth of the matter is, both of these male and female gays are extremely illusory. Both of them lead to nothing but suffering. Let's talk about the male gaze for a second. Some movies we see this in is Wolf of Wall Street where his girlfriend is just kind of this bimbo. She's not very smart, but she looks so attractive and he's the leader and she's kind of just his little arm candy. Grown Ups, where Adam Sandler is this extremely mediocre looking man, not attractive or fit or anything like that, but yet he always has the most beautiful wife or girlfriend or whatever. And basically every other Adam Sandler movie too. Like, come on dude, really? But not is it only in TV shows and movies, it's also made its way into things like video games, like the Catwoman video game where you see how she walks and she's swinging her hips back and forth and she's got this big round booty. I'm not gonna lie, that was lit as hell. <laughs> but anyways, surely a woman would never ever objectify a man like that, right? Right? Wrong. The female gaze is everywhere as well. We saw it when this TV host made Zac Efron pull his shirt off in front of a live crowd, whether he wanted to or not. So much to my fans. Incredibly awkward, if you ask me. The new Ghostbusters movie where Chris Hemsworth is reduced to this himbo, this buff, dumb idiot that's good for nothing but his looks. And also basically every episode of The Ellen Show where she makes some guy take his shirt off in front of all these guffawing women. The male and female gaze is prevalent in almost all types of content that we consume each and every day. When the first Star Wars movie that had Kylo Ren in it, there was a lot of conflicting feelings about how people felt about Kylo Ren playing the new villain. When he took off his mask, a lot of guys took on the internet 
talking about how disappointed they were. How did you feel when Kylo Ren took his helmet off? Does the casting of Kylo Ren bother anyone else as much as me? Adam Driver too ugly to play Kylo Ren? But then as time went on, we see that there's almost a sort of cult-like following from women who absolutely adore Kylo Ren now. And also Kylo Ren. He could choke me like he did General Hux and I'd thank him. <laughs> Adam Driver said, I respect the ugly community, but it ain't me. Is it pronounced Adam Driver or owner of fat guy? It's because of his non-stereotypical attractive looks, his voice, his larger than average nose, and his relatable appearance. He's not just some hunk with piercing eyes and a chiseled jawline. So this could be one of our first hints that maybe looking like the masculine alpha male hunk isn't the most important thing when it comes to attracting women. Hmm, could that be possible? Now, in this next younger generation that we're currently experiencing, let me ask you, who are the most popular and desired men in media? They're guys like Little Huddy, Timothy Shablagoo, and basically anybody in any K-pop band. And what do we notice? They're not super hyper masculine. They're actually not masculine at all. They actually have a lot of feminine qualities. That's because in this day and age, this generation, this hyper masculinity is less and less popular because some of the traits being associated with that sort of, sort of representation are disloyal, hyper aggressive, and non-empathetic towards women. So we're gonna do a little test. I'm gonna show you fellas some pictures of some K-pop members, and I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to mind. This is Jimin. What do you think? A lot of you will probably say he looks really girly. <laughs> He's not very intimidating. He can't protect anybody. He might look like sort of a pussy. But to women in this generation, you ask them, they would say he's soft, gentle, misunderstood, a bit mysterious. That's because women see them in the female gaze, where it has a lot less to do with your outside appearance. And you ask a lot of women, they will say that one of these men, like one of these K-pop idols, could offer a lot more than some sort of Chad might. And this hurts me to say because I consider myself somewhat of a Chad, and so do a lot of my subscribers. Just check the comments. Let's talk more about the female gaze towards men. The female gaze is kind of hard to describe, but what we kind of know it as is it's what is felt and not what is seen versus the male gaze, which is based a lot more off of what is seen rather than felt. For example, a woman looking at one of these K-pop idols, there's a lot left to imagine because there's not this distraction of the bulging muscles and the strikingly good looks. They look less threatening and there's less of a filter built up so they can imagine more how he might be more viable as a partner. But what about the female gaze towards women? For centuries, just like the men have seen these strong, masculine, ripped men in media, women are also cursed with that illusion. It's these women that are super soft with rosy cheeks, surrounded by rose petals and flowers and swans. It puts these pressures on women to perform these femininities at all time, which just isn't realistic. Even when they're not even around men or being viewed by anyone, they feel guilty for sitting in their own home without makeup on because they've developed this internalized feminine expectation. And it's no different for us men. It's been embedded in our frontal lobe that we have to embody this alpha male characteristic, this super masculine entity, and it even sets us in competition with other males, trying to outstrength them, trying to out seduce them, other women, that is not them specifically, and to simply out alpha them. But we've come to realize that these alpha male tendencies might not be as important as we think. As a matter of fact, in 1970, the author David Mech wrote a book called The Wolf, where he talked about how alpha male wolves interact in their group. But then several years later, he actually released literature explaining how alpha males may not even be prevalent in wolf society, as well as many other animal societies that we originally thought had a for sure alpha male. 
Uh, the term alpha is, um, isn't really accurate when uh, describing most of the um, leaders of, of wolf packs. The term implies uh, that uh, the wolves fought and um, competed strongly to get to the top of the pack. In actuality, the way they get there is merely uh, producing a bunch of offspring, which are the rest of the pack then, and uh, becoming the natural leaders that way, just like with a pair of humans producing a family. But, 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 there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We are advancing, we are evolving. There is a savior. I'm kidding, there's no savior. But there is someone who I think actually challenges both the male and female gaze. And his name is Vinny motherfucking Hacker, mate. I don't know why I just did an accent. But yeah, I'm talking about Vinny Hacker. The TikTok sensation, millions and millions of followers. He can wear masculine clothing with yet a touch of femininity. He can wear a full face of makeup and do a photo shoot. And then the next day, go knock a sucker out. A physically fit body that is equivalent to what we would see in the Greek gods. And yet these soft cheeks and supple, kissable lips of an Aphrodisian woman. Anyways. But yeah, I think he really does a good job of encapsulating both sides of the spectrum. Why does anybody need to be boxed into one or the other? So what about any of this is making you ugly, as the title suggests? Well, if you're a guy who likes to work out, you likely got into fitness because you wanted to look better to attract more women, because that's what the movies have told you, am I right? But yet, you went there, no women running up, asking for your number, so disrespectful. What did you get mostly? You got guys coming up, complimenting your biceps and your chest and asking for your routine and your diet and whatnot. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, that happened to me. I was unpleasantly surprised when I had no girls running up to rip my pants off. But the reality is that the male gaze has corrupted what you think women really find attractive. You think it's these bulging muscles and this sharp jawline, but it's not. Obviously, some will find that attractive, but we find that the ignorance of the female gaze has also caused us to neglect a huge part of what women find attractive, which is the unseen and the felt. It's the loyalty, the empathy, the protection, and the viability of a future partner. So how do we escape the boxes of the male and female gaze? Well, I think the first step is allowing yourself to feel the way that you feel and not reject it and allow yourself to act on the way that you feel. If you're feeling kind of feminine or whatever, do something about it. Throw on some makeup. But if you're feeling masculine, you can go hit the gym. Go hang with the bros. Play some Call of Duty or something. Because if you reject these instincts, then you will start to reject yourself. You will lose yourself in trying to be what you think everybody else wants you to be. So define your own gaze. Be the Brett gaze, the Josh gaze the Tiffany gaze, the Chad gaze, whatever it is. See what you like. Who do you want to be? What do you want to define yourself as? And be that proudly, without exception, and no regrets, and no apologies. Or simply drop gazes altogether. Why do we have to have these categories? It doesn't matter. They don't mean anything. They're just words. Embrace variety. How boring would the world be if there was only two categories girly girls and alpha male chads, right? <laughs> Allow everybody to be who they want to be. Allow yourself to be who you want to be. Embrace the variety. How fun is it that every person can be extremely different from the next? I think that's incredibly beautiful. After all, we only have one life. Why live your life trying to fit into a box rather than stand out? Thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't, please subscribe, turn the post notifications on, and until next time, peace.